Boom. Boom. Gamers, we're gonna do a water sieve tier list. What does this exactly include, right? What is water? Water map that we're gonna be doing the sieve tier list on is going to be a full water map. Like you have to fight against your opponent on water. Like you have to commit. Not maps like, like Four Lakes or Forest Ponds, right? I mean maps like Mediterranean, uh, Boulder Bay, uh, Warring Islands, maps like that that require you to know, just go all out the water and have the water control. Because if you don't, you're gonna get overwhelmed with fishing economy and then trade. Now there's not too many maps that are full water, but I decided to make a t uh, sieve tier list anyway for that because I get asked very often which sieves are the best on water, which sieves should I practice on water. Uh, right now we only have Mediterranean, right? But in team games there is Boulder Bay, so this is going to help if you're a team gamer or one-on-one -on -one gamer because um, whatever is good in one-on-one -on, -one on water is also good in 2v2 on water or 3v3 or 4v4. Again, Mongolian Heights I don't count in a water map because you don't have to fight uh, for water control there. So let's get started. Um, which maps are the or which sieves are the best with water maps? Um, it's the sieves that actually uh, not the sieves that have the best water upgrades or, or boats or ships necessarily or economy on water. It's the sieves that have the best land economy because the more land economy you have the more uh, fighting ships you'll be able to produce and take the water and then kind of boom from then on out. So the best sieve on water without a doubt is China. Maybe a surprise, uh, probably not. Why is China the best sieve on water by far? It's because they have Imperial officials, so they can, they get a lot of bonus gold or they can even potentially skip mining gold because they have taxes. Uh, if you get good dock spawns or docks close enough to your TC, you can also collect taxes from your docks, which print gold quite a bit. Um, you can use the uh, supervisability on your lumber camps, which is 20% more wood. So that's kind of crazy. You can also sneak in a Song Dynasty. So while you're fighting on water, you're actually producing villagers faster on the land as well. So even if you're just trading, you're slowly getting ahead uh, throughout the game. And having the scout have 30% extra range is pretty nice because you can put it behind your opponent's docks and be able to see what army on the water. Uh, he has. Other than that, I mean, super late Imperial, they have Bauchads, which are the best Imperial ships. Um, but other than that, they got nothing, you know, else, I guess. Like I said, the best sieve for the water is the sieve that has the best economy, and uh, China has really good economy. Um, Imperial officials, like I said, help quite a bit. 20% extra wood is obviously really, really good. And one of the biggest ones, obviously, is China is producing 20% faster on water. So um, even if you're one dock versus one dock, you will have more fishing ships than your opponent early on. Uh, if it's three docks against three docks, you're basically working with 3.6 docks compared to your opponent. So all those things make China number one. Uh, not to mention that uh, you can also go double dock. And once you're aging up with China, you can age up super quick because your building is also produced faster. Amazing. All right. Uh, I would say probably China is in, in tier on, on its own. Um, I don't think any sieve is equal to China. It's just the best sieve. And um, yeah, it's pretty good. All right. Next sieve we will be talking about that is A tier is English. Now, English is uh, is quite good and it's getting explored more and more, but English has a lot of potential for aggression on the ground while putting aggression on the water. So this is why I'm putting it at A tier. And the reason why English is so good is first of all, their ships cost 10% resources less. So even though you don't have, uh, you know, I said the best sieves or the sieves that have ground uh, economy working really well. Well, English doesn't have like bonus wood gathering or gold gathering or whatever, but their ships cost 10% less. So, yeah. Also, they have the best feudal upgrade for your ships, which is 
uh, I don't know what it's called, but it gives your ships plus one range. So this is really, really good. And you can also, whenever you're fighting with your opponent, you will always be the one that gets the first shot on the um, enemy uh, army. And if that's the case, that might be the difference between winning or losing the game. Another thing that makes uh, English really, really good is you are aging up with um, Council Hall. So the moment you age up, you can make like two, three longbows and send them behind their wood line and you stop their wood production while you continue your, your you know, ship production in the water and you can quickly overwhelm your opponent on water because you managed to delay their, their wood income for like 30 seconds or one minute. Another reason why English is so good is because not only they can do longbows on land, but they can also do barracks into H2 men at arms. And these are obviously going to be super, super annoying and super difficult to deal with for your opponent. All you gotta do is just rally them into the wood line of your opponent. And they only cost food and 20 gold, so uh, it's pretty good. The only thing that you should be careful of when you play English is to not overcommit on ground because then you're going to lose water. So the way you should play is like poke on the ground and then commit fully on water. Then when water stabilizes, poke on the ground again and so on and so forth. Um, the next sieve that is equal to China or sorry to, to English in my opinion is HRE. Um, in some situations English is better, in some situations HRE is better. Um, the reason why H3 is so good is Akin Chapel. As simple as that. If you get a good Akin Chapel on your gold and wood, or you get an Akin Chapel between two wood lines, that's the best case scenario. And for a long, long, long time, you, your wood uh, chopping is 40% faster. That's insane. You can outproduce any sieve on water by just having way, way, way more ships. Maybe not China and this is gonna skyrocket your economy uh and the thing is you don't need a chapel that covers like gold stone or, or or wood berries you just need wood so it's very hard to get a bad chapel on this map um, you either get a, a good chapel or a really good chapel there's nothing less than that so this makes h3 incredibly incredibly good and another reason why it's so good is because just like English, they have men at arms in feudal age, so you can also put pressure on the land with HRE. You don't need longbows, you can just send a couple of men at arms and do a lot of eco damage. The downside of HRE so HRE is stronger initially than English, but as the game goes, if you don't manage to uh, win the water, which you probably should, but if you don't manage to win the water or put some serious pressure on the land, uh, once your chapel is out of wood, basically, then you're kind of just a sieve. You know, you don't really have any bonuses going for you. Um, but that window where you got to do something is massive. Like, it's not five minutes, it's like 15 minutes or something, 20 minutes, which is quite a long time, uh, while having 40% gathering speed advantage over your opponent. Um, obviously, going into the late game, if it reaches Castle or Imperial, English and China are better than uh, HRE, but you should have advantage as an HRE. Whew. The next sieve we will be talking about is... A Rus. Um, I think Rus is B tier. It's not as good as these top sieves. It has some cheese potential. Uh, the cheese being you age up super quickly and then you send over two fishing ships, you transform it into arrow ships and then just kill their fishing boats. Um, the problem with this is if the opponent knows what they're doing, they can just uh, age up extremely fast as well, not be greedy, stay one dock and then they make Springle ship and you're screwed. But you can also play a Roost normally. Uh, their fishing eco is the best in the game because their ships don't need to go back to the dock to drop of resources and they get also 20% extra wood from the wooden fortress so they get the same bonus pretty much like China um, except they also get golden gate which makes it so that you actually don't need to mine gold with Rus at all uh, because whenever you need gold for sprinkle ships or upgrades you can just sell food because of your extra fishing eco and you get gold that way. So basically every time you sell food, you get 150 gold uh, for 100 food and you can get, you know, wheelbarrow, 
uh, double broad axe or just use it to produce ships. Um, it, it lacks options in feudal, but like it doesn't have men at arms. But you can go knights, and this is the this is the funny part uh, about how civs counter each other or can counter each other. So if you go men at arms against Rus, Rus can make knights to deflect your men at arms, and this is a way better fight for knights than men at arms. The problem is, then the opponent can go spears, and suddenly you're in a, a little bit of a weird spot. If you go archers, then you're spending wood on the ground units, which you don't necessarily want to do. And obviously, spears are less wood than archers are. But there is some potential potential with Rus, just not as, as good as some of these other ones. Um, the next Civ we will be talking about... Let me see. Mm, this is a hard one. This is a hard one. Let, let's go with the bottom. Um, Delhi. Oh, sorry. Malians. Uh, Malians, in theory, sounds cool. Like, it's, it's going to do really well on water because they have aeroships that uh, have a unique upgrade that makes them do more damage. But aeroships got nerfed recently by making Springle Ship better against them. So this also makes Malians a lot worse. There's always a weird time with Malians whenever you play them. It's like, do you add gold pits? Do you, do you make more ships? It feels like you never have enough wood. You don't have any bonus um, economically except gold, but you don't really need a lot of gold and water. So it's just kind of like a weird, uh, weird sip. Not great. Um, and also they don't have like stuff like men at arms or whatever so you can attack your opponent and, and bully them um, And this is all assuming that The sieve tier list is that you're fighting in feudal with every sieve Which is what you should do because if you don't fight in feudal the opponent will take the water The next sieve is French Now I do think that French is a little bit better maybe like a C tier in team games uh, In one on one it's pretty bad because the only thing you can get is like when you age up you'll ha you can make a knight or a horseman and instantly harass your opponent but if your opponent plays against french they can just make a barrack two spear and, and they're safe the reason why i say um why in team games it might be better is because if you're playing 3v3 or 2v2 if you make a knight it can harass multiple opponents right so two spears won't be enough you gotta make multiple spears um so that can be kind of annoying for your opponents other than that they don't really have any bonuses on water they do have cheaper upgrades for you know wheelbarrow and, and double broad axe and every other upgrade so that's pretty cool but other than that they don't offer too too much on water uh, they're kind of like, they can put some pressure on the ground, but uh, Rus, English, and Atri can do it a lot better. The next sit we'll be talking about is... Delhi. I mean, what can I say? Uh, their biggest bonus on water is that, um, you know, a couple of patches ago, maybe three, four months ago, they got change so that you can put scholars in the docks after you research an upgrade and you can boost the dock production now this sounds cool but you don't really need you know bigger better dock production you just you just need like two three docks maximum so while this is cool it doesn't actually do anything on full water maps so it's not that big you do get upgrades um for free like wheelbarrow like double broad axe uh, forestry and all that which is great it's cool but other than that you don't really get anything um, even eventually if you capture the sacred sites again you get gold which you don't need a lot of it on water and because every sieve gets double broad axe and wheel wheelbarrow on the land anyway the fact that you're getting it for free doesn't change too much so it's just not not that great of a sieve even if you get to castle, you don't have much going for you. Uh, the upgrades on docks are going to take a long time for your ships. And you don't have any potential ground pressure as Delhi. So, And 
the last three sieves that we are going to talk about are Ab Acid, Mongol, and Ottoman. Now, I was thinking if I should put any of these into B tier, uh, but I can't do that. So I'm going to put this in C tier, potential B tier, okay? And this is why. Ottomans actually have the strongest castle ships. I don't know what they're called. They're, they're like the military school ships that produce units on water. They work like military schools. And they're actually incredibly strong. Incredibly, incredibly strong. And they can destroy the docks. The problem is, um, if your games don't go into castle evenly, like if, if you either lose or win the, the water in Feudal Age, then having that ship is kind of pointless because it's like, okay, you can make it, but then you lost all the water already, right? But if you can manage to get there, it can be pretty good. So that's why I say it's potential B tier if you get to castle, but if you stay in Feudal forever, probably C tier. It's really hard to get military schools out on this map because you need all the wood focus on water. Your docks do cost 100 wood, which is nice. And you can also age up with the, uh, whatever it's called, the, the trade landmark. So you get passive gold, which is also nice. But other than that, you know, they don't really have extra economy. They don't have amazing units on ground. They don't have any good ships until castle, which like I said, usually water maps are, are done by then one, one way or the other. The next sieve is Abbasid. So again, we're talking about Mediterranean, Boulder Bay, uh, maybe on like map like Warring Islands, this might be a lot better because you have more time to do stuff. Um, Abbasid docks are cheaper. They're 75 wood and you can go double dock with Abbasid in Dark Age. Problem is, uh, no ground units, aka no men at arms or knights to fight in feudal. The benefit is that you don't need to use workers to age up, so that's quite nice. Like while aging up, you can actually add a third or, or, or a third dock, so you produce out of three docks with your insane fishing eco. Um, you can also go for culture wings, so your arrow slits are cheaper. You can go for economic wings, so your villagers are cheaper, so you have like more food eco. And they have really, really good boom. In one-on-ones, they're pretty underwhelming and they get overwhelmed by Rus quite badly, especially with the little cheese I told you earlier. And they lose against these three sieves. If you somehow manage to hold out, it's okay. Uh, but in team games, I think Abbasid is a little bit better. And it's the, it's the case of like, maybe in team games, Abbasid is B tier uh, because Team games are a lot slower in a way because um, the maps are bigger. So Abbasid has like that extra time it needs to get to Feudal because you can't speed up your age ups. So maybe in team games it's like a B tier, but in one ones it's a it's a C tier. It's not great. Now I have been experimenting with Mongols, and I gotta say, Mongol is around a C tier. Now, I do think Mongol has potential. It's very hard to play it on water. You can actually tower rush the opponents on the, on the land. You can tower rush their wood lines. If they don't see, it's like, it's great, amazing, right? But if they see it, you kind of like just lose eco because you just send villager across the map. So you have Khan, which can be pretty annoying and you can poke villagers forever. On water, you don't gain too much. Uh, you have an upgrade that, like, every time you destroy a ship, you get 25-25. Which is... It's okay, but it's something special. And you still gotta build an U with a point. The good thing about Mongol is, you have got a Khan. You can Tower Rush the opponents. You can make arrow slits really, really easily with Mongols. Because you're getting free stone. So those are all the nice things. But other than that, they don't have knights, they don't have men at arms in feudal. You can potentially trade with Mongols in feudal, which is kind of interesting with Silver Tree. And if the opponent is going for men at arms, you can go Mangudai to counter it. So again, that's also interesting. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Maybe Mongol is a B tier. I haven't tested him out too much, but the, the games that I did play with him, I managed to win. So I think Mongol can potentially be B tier, but... 
if the game gets dragged out then you can't wall either so there's gonna be like two huge sides that, that the opponents can run through so we're gonna have to go with c tier yeah you don't need wood uh, for houses with mongol that is true but again they don't have any you know eco upgrades you could potentially put gur on your uvu after you make a dock and then get like the improved wheelbarrow or improved forestry but that's all cool and then atri or english or, or china come and just kill you in water you know so yeah that is it yeah i would say this is probably my final one and again this is assuming full water maps like mediterranean boulder bay warring islands and this is assuming you are fighting in feudal so not like going like second tc or something uh if you're playing on the mediterranean because now it's in the latter map or boulder bay you have to go water and you have to fight on water if you don't you will simply get overwhelmed by the fishing economy because it's quite quite good anyway if you're watching this on youtube thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you learned something new and i'm not ex i'm not gonna probably do this sip tier list for water every month like i'm doing with the normal sip tier list because i doubt anything will change maybe in season four if they do more naval changes maybe i'll make another one uh but until then this is the one thank you youtube i hope you have a great day twitch gamers let's keep going Thank you.